keep smiling, keep shining. All right, all right, all right. Yes, yes, yes. I am on here and it's Tabitha. Yes, I'm back again. I know, I know. I'm on a roll, right? Ah. Ah. I, this is in my spirit. This is the way I'm feeling today. And I don't have anything great or spectacular or abnormal going on. But guess what? I got a smile. I got a smile in my spirit. I got a smile in my heart. Um, so keep smiling. Keep shining. Please, please, please like, share, tell somebody, tell somebody. We've got a smile to share. We've got a smile to share today. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So come on in as the room fills up. I am just going to uh, let this music play. I don't own the rights to this song, so let me say that up front. This is just some good old Kurt Franklin. This is the way I'm feeling today in my spirit. And so I'm smiling. I'm smiling, I'm smiling, I'm smiling. I'm smiling all the way to glory, all the way to glory. So I am happy, I'm happy in my heart. I'm so happy and so I wanted to just come on and tell you to smile today. And I wanna give you a quick word of encouragement to go along with that. Just this one little catchy word, I know it may not sound like a lot, but keep smiling. Today is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Keep smiling, keep shining, keep sharing, right? Um, again, my name is Tabitha. Some of you know me as Coach Tabitha, Coach Tabitha Inspires. Um, you can follow me on Instagram under uh, Tab Inspires, hashtag Tab Inspires. You can find me on YouTube under Coach Tabitha Inspires um, or on Periscope under Coach Tabitha Inspires. So please, please, please like, share, follow. I'm going to get into this word right after a little bit of rejoicing with our beloved Kirk Franklin I smile um, when I was growing up I know that was just a few minutes ago um, but there is always a reason to smile you know or so I thought as a child you know like um, my grandmother used to say you smile when you want to cry you know some people smile because that's all they have and so just as you know life is going on and life is happening with each of us keep smiling keep sharing keep giving it your best okay there is so much going on you can look to the left you can look to the right and you can see calamity on every side right but keep smiling you are on this side of glory keep smiling okay um, when you smile you make the devil mad you confuse people when you smile child keep smiling keep smiling i want to encourage you to keep smiling and so I put like a, just a quick little word together as I was researching, um, you know, I found out that there are over 31 scriptures in the Bible regarding smiling and how smiling the Bible in Proverbs 15, 13 says a joyful heart makes a cheerful face. But when the heart is sad, the spirit is broken. So you know what? Your spirit and your face need to get in alignment, honey. You got, you got to tell your spirit what to do, okay? Your soul what to do. Let your spirit influence your face, okay? Because we've got the glory of God living in us. So why? It's almost a contradiction, hello, for a Christian to be this person who is frowned up when you are a believer in Christ and you, your hope and your glory is in Christ. So you should be smiling all the time okay because even though in the midst of of trials and triumph you have a lot to smile about you are here and so in your faith your walk your hope is in Christ Jesus so you've got a lot to smile about and so just as I was sitting there and I said, well, Lord, you know, tell me about this word. Tell me about this word. It made me think about, you know, what this, I, this came about because I was having a conversation with my teenage son and he got in the car and he was just frowned up. And I said, well, what's the matter with you? Um, yes. Hello, Mukesh. Um, and I said, well, what's the matter? And he, well, I don't have this and I don't have that. And he's, you know, he's just starting college and, and he's still living at home and, and he was feeling some kind of way about it. 
and everybody else gets to drive to class. And I said, you know what? You should be grateful. You should be thankful that you have family that allows you to drive to class. So I started just messing with him and kind of reminding him of all the things that you could say or do to just bring a smile on his face. And so as he started smiling, I began to tell him, I said, you know what? You have a smile just like your mom and just like your dad. Just, you know, I said, you know, you've been blessed to have a beautiful, you know, smile and no, nothing of me, all glory to God. I said, but you've been blessed to have a beautiful smile and not to mention the, the cost of braces, right? So keep smiling and keep shining. Um, so, you know, I said, you've got a lot to smile about. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Um, another scripture says that, you know, um, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Keep smiling. Keep shining. Hello, Prophetess McIntosh. Good to see you, woman of God. More grace to you. Keep smiling. Keep shining. Don't you give up. Don't you hold back. Keep smiling. Keep pushing. Keep pressing toward the mark. Keep going forward because you've got a lot to smile about. And so, you know, as I started just telling him and I kind of started joking with him a little bit he began to smile more and I said good I said now you know and I, I started speaking to his spirit as I was talking to him I was praying for him in my head and I said I speak to the spirit of this child father elevate his spirit you know elevate put joy in his spirit again, Lord. And you, you can speak to the spirit of someone. Hello. Even when you have them physically there, you can speak to the spirit of a person and, and, and ha ask God to minister to the spirit of him. Right. And so I said, Holy spirit, just take control, take the reins. And so as I started doing that, he just began to smile more. So, you know, I was sitting there and again, I want to reiterate that being a Christian, not smiling or always frowning is almost a contradiction because you've got so much to smile about. Your hope, your joy, your glory is in Jesus Christ. And that's a lot to be smiling for and about. And so it made me think of Paul though. Paul over in Acts chapter 16 is literally beaten by the prison guards thrown into jail and then shackled to his cell. Come on. And I said, glory to God. And yet this man, this man, Paul and Silas, that, that duo, that dynamic duo, if you will, they are sitting there shackled in prison. And yet the Bible teaches us, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like they were having a nice walk on the beach. They weren't sitting in the lap of luxury. And yet they decided, they made a choice to praise God. They made a choice to worship. They made a choice. Yes, they worshiped. They made a choice to in the face of adversity, to keep smiling. In the face of, of being shackled to a cell, they kept smiling. In the face of being beaten, bruised. You know, they didn't have laws and regulations like we do that says the prison guards can't do X, Y, Z to the inmate. They literally were bruised and battered and shackled to that sale. But glory to God, they made the choice to smile and worship. And it says that they sang hymns to God. Some of us need to smile to put a put a smile on God's face. That should be your object of affection. He should be your object of affection. You need to be smiling and pointing to God. Your smile is a representation of Jesus living in you. It's a representation of having the Holy Spirit within you. And smile, smiling is what Paul and Silas decided to do. They decided that no matter what, I could be shackled down. Life is going to throw you situations that shackle you to the ground. There are going to be items. There are going to be people who are coming against you and and adversity thrown at you and you have to make a decision to smile smile no matter what smile in the face of depression smile when people say you should have been done xyz by now given what you've been through in this life but you yet over here 
smiling. She's still smiling. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 31. You know that woman of excellence? You know, she was a, she was a savvy young lady. She just says she smiled at the days to come because she knew who her hope was in. She knew that Jesus Christ was her living hope and she kept smiling. She knew that she had faith in God. She had no reason to be scared. She had no reason to fear. You know, second Timothy one and seven says, you know, we, you know, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And that's a reason to smile because we don't have to fear. We don't have to think about what the days coming are going to bring because we know who's bringing the days. We know the author of the days. We know the one who numbered the stars in the heaven. And so we can smile. We can keep smiling. You know, I used to be called when I was a kid, for some of my friends and family who are watching, I used to be called Smiley and um, rest in peace. Uh, Beverly Alexander used to always say, oh, here comes Smiley or here comes Rainbow Eyes. And is you know, just as God would have it, you know what? I have maintained that smile. Even though, you know what? People would say, if you knew everything that she was going through right now, I don't know how she's smiling. But guess what? The devil can't hold me down. Because my faith is on Jesus Christ, the solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You better stand on the word. You better get you a scripture. I'm telling you that when I saw that Paul was still standing, Paul was still smiling and praising God, that blessed my whole spirit. And I said, Lord, well, if Paul can smile, then certainly we can keep smiling because we're not shackled down. If you're watching me right here on Facebook, I trust God that you are not shackled down to a prison cell. Glory to God. I don't know what kind of technology they have in there nowadays, but guess what? You're watching me and that's a blessing glory and then it says suddenly and every time I see suddenly in the Bible my spirit just gets excited my baby leaps within that there is a suddenly coming your life is gonna bring a suddenly God's about to bless you with a suddenly suddenly God's going to bless you it says suddenly there was an earthquake don't you know that your smile will cause God to move on your behalf it will cause God to shake the earth because you smile because you kept pressing because you kept persevering in the face of adversity God honors that and he did. He moved the heavens and earth. He, it says there's a great earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. That's how much God loves it when you smile. That's how much God loves it when you keep worshiping. That's how much God loves it when you keep praising, when you stay in his face, even though all hell is breaking out around you. Keep smiling. Keep shining. Keep reading your word. Keep trusting God that he is going to make all things, not some things, not a little thing, not a big thing. All things are going to work together for the good of those that love the Lord. You love Jesus. You keep smiling. Everything is going to work out for your good. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but glory to God, joy comes in the morning. You've got to know that I don't care what it looks like on your job. I don't care what it looks like with your children or your spouse or your in-laws or, or whomever in your family. They may be acting a monkey. Yep, that's the way I say it. They over there acting a fool. But guess what? My hope is in God. I'm going to keep smiling. Every day you get up on this side of glory, you can put one foot in front of the other. That is a reason to smile. And it says that immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. That is where y'all need to shout, okay? Because I'm telling you that immediately, you know that suddenly and then immediately, suddenly immediately, immediately the chains fell off. Immediately the doors flung open. God's about to open some doors in your life. He's about to break through in some barriers in your life. You think that, oh my God, this is happening and that is happening. You know what? The devil always throws adversity at you when it's time to break through. Hallelujah. It's your breakthrough time. God's about to open the doors, but you got to keep smiling. You got to keep praising. Paul's life is a living testimony of what we can do. If you keep smiling, you keep pushing, you keep pressing, you keep persevering. Don't you, don't you get out of the race? Not just yet because God's got your finish line is right there. It's right there. The devil wants to discourage you because he knows how close you are to your breakthrough. 
The chains are going to fall off. The doors are going to open. God's about to open some doors of opportunity for people watching on this, on the broadcast, on the replay even. He's about to open some doors of opportunity for you because you kept praising and persevering. There is a, uh, there's, there's an open door that's coming to you. Just keep praising. I keep hearing you. The Holy Spirit just keeps saying, keep praising, keep persevering because the doors are going to open. It's going to be even hallelujah like Jericho when they kept walking, marching around. They kept marching around. They kept marching around. And finally they let out a sound. When you let out that sound, everything that God does is preceded by a sound and you praise, he releases something. You praise the walls come down. You praise the doors come open. You praise the earth shakes. Hallelujah. Acts 16 and 22. That's exactly the way it happened. They praise, they made a sound unto God. And then and suddenly and immediately, suddenly and immediately, the doors flung open, the earth quaked, hallelujah, and blessings came down. Praises went up and blessings came down. That's the nature of the God we serve. He loves to be worshiped. He loves to be praised. When you praise God, you speak to his heart. When you praise God, you can find favor with him because he loves to be worshiped. Hey, Uncle David. Hey, he loves to be worshiped. He loves to be praised. Glory to God. He wants that. And when you do that, it's just like a father with a child. I don't know too many dads watching. I don't know too many moms watching this who, when their child comes to them with adoration, with praise, with worship, won't give their child every single thing that they can. Because they know that the heart, the posture of the child is pure. They're coming to them. They may want something, yes, but they know how to get it. They know how to soften mama's heart so that they can get what they want, what they need. And there's not a time if, if it's within my reach and everything is within God's reach. There's nothing too hard for God. Hello, glory to God. Um, nothing too hard for God, according to Genesis 18, right? That's what the Bible teaches. There's nothing too hard for him. Praise him, worship him, stay in his face. That's how you get results. That's how you do it. Keep smiling, keep shining, keep worshiping. Know that if Paul did it, we can do it, right? And, and your smile is even an invitation, if you will, to invite somebody else to Christ because people want to know what you're smiling about. They know that, that you've been unemployed for a year. They know that your child is incarcerated. They know that you just buried your grandchild. They know, but you are still smiling and they want to know how it is nothing but Jesus. It's the love of God. It's the, the Bible says in Psalms, hope thou my soul, soul, hope in God. That is the very presence, the very essence that God is his. If you put your hope in him, he will, he will manifest blessings in your life. If you worship, you will open the doors for blessings to pour out. Worship is not just a good song. Okay. Let me, let me clarify that for some of you. Worshiping God is not just a song. A song is maybe the place that gets you or the, or the, the vehicle that takes you to the presence of God, but being in the presence of God, that is how you activate being, that is how you activate worship, right? So, so maybe a song takes you there, but it's just a vehicle to get you in his presence. When you're in his presence, you can worship. When you're in his presence, you get the fullness of God. When in the presence of God is joy, fullness of joy. You've got to stay in the face of God and know that when you get there, that there is no good thing that he will withhold from you. There is nothing that he won't stop. Hallelujah. Massive breakthrough is coming to the body of Christ. And I'm just the agent. I'm just a little vessel that God sent today to say, tell somebody to smile, tell somebody to keep worshiping daughter, because when they do that, I'm going to open doors. Doors are going to fling open. Suddenly, there's going to be shaken earthquakes. Earth, The earth is going to move for you. There are going to be regions and areas where God is going to move the earth where you thought no one else could have done this. And he does it just like that because he wants to get all the glory. Give him all the glory because he is going to move like nobody else. You're going to know it was him because nothing and no one else could have done that but God. So keep smiling. I encourage you today, just as Paul praised and worshiped, 
I encourage you to keep smiling. I encourage you to keep praising and worshiping God because when you do, he will send us suddenly and then immediately to your doorstep. Suddenly the earth quaked. Suddenly the chains broke. Suddenly the doors were open. Immediately God will do that on your behalf. I bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for joining me. And just before we go, I'm going to just wrap this up with prayer and, and peace and shalom to each and every one of you. If you have to go, I appreciate you stopping by to spend a few moments with me today. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come humbly before your throne of grace, grace, thanking you, thanking you for the suddenly that you are about to impart on each and every listener, thanking you for the immediate door that are about to be open. Thank you for the immediately chains that you are loosing, loosing generational chains, loosing generational curses, loosing, hallelujah, any, any body injury, any body infirmi infirmity, even father, anything in, in the realm of, of thyroid, anything in the realm of, of high blood pressure, loosing sickness. Hallelujah. Lord, your word says we bind it on earth. It'll be bound in heaven. If we loose it on earth, it'll be loose in heaven. Loose their bodies from sickness, loose their bodies from infirmity. Father, Lord, I pray in Jesus name that you immediately give them a breakthrough. Massive breakthroughs are coming to the body of Christ today in the name of Jesus, if they keep smiling, keep worshiping, keep praising you, Lord, if they make a sound unto you, God, I thank you that you have given them even the time and opportunity to stop by this broadcast, to stop by this live so that they can hear this word and know that the formula is that if they worship, hallelujah, then they will be able to receive the blessing. When praises go up, the blessings come down. Father, I thank you that you have blessed each and every listener. I thank you that you have compelled their heart to worship. I thank you that you are healing their bodies, healing their minds, healing their souls, Father. But most of all, I thank you that you sent me here to be a change agent in this environment. For these people under the sound of my voice, Father, I thank you for healing their body. I thank you for turning Turning their hearts to you, Lord Jesus, giving them an opportunity to repent of their sins. Hallelujah. To turn away. Repent literally means to turn away. Father, thank you for causing them to turn away from their ways, Lord, and to turn unto you. You are a wellspring of, of forgiveness. Hallelujah. You are the one who heals. You are the one who forgives. You are the one who turns us to you, Lord Jesus, and you make our future bright. It's so bright that they have to smile again, Lord. Keep them smiling, Father, in the name of Jesus. He'll their body. Watch over their children. Let there be no retaliation, no backlash. Hallelujah. No ramifications for them listening to this word of God, Lord. Lord, heal their bodies. Heal their souls, Lord. Lord, heal their finances, Father. Even heal their, their marriages. Heal their children. Heal their relationships, Lord. Heal their heart from any disease, Lord. Heal their heart from any, any dis-ease, Father. Any sickness, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, keep them in their, keep them in your presence where there is fullness of joy. Let the joy of the the Lord rest on their souls. Let there be peace in their hearts, minds, and souls. Nothing missing and nothing broken. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray all these things. Shalom. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I can't help but to praise him. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity to praise. Woo. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. I encourage you to get in the presence of God. I encourage you to worship him because when you praise him, there's something that happens on your behalf. Hallelujah. When you worship, just like, like Paul did, they were in a meek situ a very bleak situation rather, where the chains were on their feet. The chains were, they were shackled, but they made a decision to praise and worship over an ax. They made a decision Whew, God, thank you, Jesus, to sing hymns to God. And when they did that, there was a suddenly. There was a suddenly of blessings. There was a suddenly a breakthrough. There was a suddenly the earth quaked. Hallelujah. And immediately doors flung open and the chains were loosed. And so I encourage you to get in faith in God's face and follow the formula because there are there is a way to get there. And this is this is a passage of scripture that will guide you to getting in God's face, to guide you to, to loosing shackles in your life. So in Jesus name, I thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching and taking a moment. God bless you all. Mwah. Love you. Jesus, more grace.